G'day guys, Luke here from Australian Off-Road. Um, quick video which is proving to, well hopefully this proves to be a good video just to showcase to people what is required on the tow vehicle. So we are getting a lot of um, issues, let's say at handovers with tow vehicles where they're not set up properly. So this video really is going to highlight to people that are coming along to pick their trailer up exactly what is needed. So this is one of our tow vehicles. Now it's got a few different things on it which I'm going to outline. But it's probably a good example because obviously no tow vehicle is going to be perfect where you can just buy stuff off the shelf and it all fits on and fits absolutely perfectly. So a few little things we've done here to make it work, but this will outline for you kind of what we're trying to achieve. So first thing I'm going to touch on is connections. Now, depending on which trailer you have got, um, you are always going to need a 12 pin. So we don't work on sevens at all anymore. It's always got to be a 12. So the wiring is the same. The advantage with the 12 and why we use it is it's got an additional row of pins in there for you to allow to add more wiring in, which is going to be really around certain options. But for us, obviously, for ease, we build a hell of a lot of trailers now. To make it easier for production, we only fit 12. So that is a key, key stipulation. You've got to have a 12 pin. You also need an Anderson. So this is going to be the same again across the board. Every trailer, you will need a grey Anderson, which is off the start battery. So what I mean by off the start battery is if you're running a dual battery system and you've got auxiliary batteries in there running fridges and things like that, the Anderson that we work on, which is taking a charge from the, to from the tow vehicle to the trailer, needs to come off the start battery. It can't be run through an auxiliary battery, which is pr predominantly going to be off a secondary charger. It needs to be straight from the battery source itself. So Anderson, these two are going to be needed on each vehicle. Now, one thing that's a little bit different, and this is going to be dependent on models, trailers that have got electric stability control, so electronic stability control or ESC as we call it, must have a red Anderson and less specified. So our standard way of wiring the trailers up is we run the electronic stability control through a red Anderson. And that is somewhere off the ignition, being that when you turn your ignition on, if this is connected to the trailer, the trailer knows that it is connected and therefore that feature is going to work. That can be done differently and I'm going to say this loosely because our, like I said, main thing I'm going to outline is this is the standard way. But if people don't want to be fitting a, a separate Anderson or they've already got a red Anderson for different reasons, then this can be wired into the 12 pin. But that must, must, must be highlighted to your finalization consultant so it can be highlighted on the order form because what a lot of people are doing is downloading the wiring diagrams and obviously we outline two different diagrams as to which way you're going to wire this up. People are getting the wrong diagram, not reading on there that it actually says the standard is through an Anderson. They're wiring the ES up through, through the 12 pin. Coming to the day of pickup, obviously we're doing it as standard through the Anderson and straight away we've got a problem in that this is not going to work. So unless you stipulate it's going to be through a red Anderson, so that's a feature. If you've got disc brakes, you don't have to worry about this at all. So any trailer with disc brakes, we don't do electronic stability control. So therefore, that in general is not needed. So they're the main things to outline in terms of wiring. One other thing that I'm going to outline, which you will see on the diagrams, but you're not going to see here, is you must have an ignition trigger wire into pin 12 of the 12 pin plug. So this is key, key for charging. Um, this is what per keeps a permanent connection between car and trailer. And you would tend to do that off your ignition, being that as soon as you turn your car off, the charging stops. So therefore, if you leave the tow vehicle hitched on overnight, you're not draining the car battery while it's not running by charging the trailer batteries. So that ignition wire is definitely needed. There is a few reasons around it, and I'm not going to get too technical. But just please make sure when you get your wiring done that you do get the ignition wire put into pin 12, which is on all the wiring diagrams. So that's enough on wiring. We've kind of covered the, the main things. Now, in terms of actually being able to hitch the trailer onto the tow vehicle, obviously you are going to need a tow bar tong. So that's this attachment that actually goes into the tow bar itself. We supply for you the pin, so you don't need to bring anything with you other than the tong and the tow bar, obviously. Don't bring it loose. Please have it fitted to the car. That'll help. But don't need anything in there. We're going to supply and fit for you this particular pin, which is suited to the DO35 on the trailer. The main thing we need to have um, set up and predominantly checked before you get here is the height of this. So when the car's on level ground, what we need to be doing is measuring from the ground 
to the top of the tongue. So when I say the top of the tongue, I'm working to the top ledge of where the pin is actually going to sit to. So the height, if I was to work on this one, is 550. Now that is a little tiny bit on the high side. Ideally, we want to be in the ballpark of between 5 to 530. The reasoning for this, and you can never give an exact measurement, is every vehicle is different. The suspension is going to be different in terms of the whether it's firm suspension, whether you've upgraded the suspension, whether you've lifted the suspension. So roughly 5 to 530 is going to be your generic height. And what that is going to mean that when we bring the trailer over and we drop it onto this pin to lock it onto the vehicle, that the trailer sits nice and level instead of either sitting down too much at the nose or sitting too high at the nose. So roughly between 5 to 5.30 and we're working to the top ledge. Now what we've had to do on this one, which again is going to be different to some people's setups depending on tow vehicle and height, is we've actually had to take the tow bar tongue out and flip it over. So normally, and you probably see this on your tow vehicle if you've got one of these in, this is going to be angled down. The reasoning why we flipped it is obviously if it was angled down, it's going to be too low. So we've literally slid this one out, flipped it up, inverted it if you like, and then fit the, the pin the opposite way around so it sits up, and that has achieved the height that we need. Now, one thing I'm going to outline is on standard factory fitted vehicles, if you've got a standard tow bar on there, you cannot always flip the tow bar tongs without it impacting the towability or the the towing capacity, let's say, or the down weight, what can go onto the car. So please, 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 if you are going to do that, check it, make sure that there's no stipulation saying that that impacts anything. This is actually an aftermarket tow bar tongue. It's not one from Ford. So therefore, there's no stipulations on this and we can do that. So that's number one in terms of hitching, being able to hitch the trailer onto the tow vehicle is checking that height. The next thing, which is causing us probably the biggest issues, is the two little lugs that come on the tow bar itself for where we can attach the chains onto, in most cases, aren't going to be big enough. So what we're finding is, especially with people getting ATM increases, because the chains have to be upgraded in size, that almost so means that the D-shackles have to be upgraded in size. And we now need, for any trailer that is a single axle, up to your 2.6 ATM, we need an 11 mil bore to be able to get that D shackle straight through. Now, this one obviously isn't as D shackle. So again, highlighting, as I did earlier on in the video, that we've had to set this one up slightly different to make it work. We don't want to obviously start drilling these out. So what we've done on this is we've actually fit what's called a hammer lock. So they've got small enough ends that it'll allow us to get in the actual parameters we've got of this tow bar and then the D shackles will actually lock onto this side of the hammer lock. So that definitely can be done and something that can be done on the day of handover. But again, if you check this in advance, we're gonna know as to whether we need to do this and this is going to be a chargeable item. So obviously if you can save yourself some money by checking this before and just makes the whole process of the handover a lot easier. So again, ideally we need an 11 mil bore and then we can just fit the D shackles straight on. If not, we may need to look at using these um, hammer locks. The last, last thing I'm going to touch on, which isn't an issue on this vehicle, is if you have got, in most cases, a ute with an overhanging canopy, if your tow bar tongue is recessed underneath that canopy, obviously for the length of the chain, so if we look at this trailer here, the length of the chains may not be long enough. So one thing to outline is that if you have got a vehicle with a canopy on, which in most cases we tend to see it on the 79 series, these chain, chains may need to be extended in order to be able to attach them onto your tow bar and them to do the right function because we don't want them obviously sitting too close to the vehicle that then when you do get into tight locks and it starts to rub and move on things, we do want a bit of slack on these when they're connected and they're always to be crossed, which we will show you on the day of handover. So hopefully that's outlined a few things for you just to make it easier. Um, but any, any questions, please, please give us a call before the handover for if you need clarity around any of this or you just want to make sure that you've got everything you need. So, like I said, this is causing us quite a few problems on the day of handovers. So please make sure you've got the right electrics. If not, let us know. We'll send you the diagrams. Please make sure you've got a tow bar tongue and it's to the height of 5 to 5.30. You don't need to worry about the pin. We'll supply that on the day for you. And if you can, please check the actual hole diameters that you've got in your tow bar underside for where the chains clamp onto. In an ideal world, there will be around 11 mil or bigger. 
if they are smaller than that, we are going to have to look at hammerlocks, and it's always good to let us know in advance to make sure we've got stock of these on the day so you can tra take your trailer away. Any questions, please give us a call.